Hey guys, Mike Tarallo here with Expressor Software. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the Salesforce operators that come with version 3.6 of Expressor Studio. We'll get started by creating a new workspace, and the location will be a path on my hard drive that I have set up for workspaces for Expressor. We'll name the workspace Salesforce. Select Create. If you're using the trial desktop version, you have the ability to enable the extensions that come with Expressor. Those extensions will be to read and write Excel files, read and write ClickView files, and read and write Salesforce objects. In this case here, we're going to enable Salesforce, and I will also enable the Excel and the ClickView libraries. That will enable me to now have access to the read and write operators from those extensions, as well as the schema creators for those extensions. I'll right click on the Salesforce workspace and we'll create a new project. And now we'll create a file connection. This is just a location of where we want to read and write files that we might use a little bit later in the demo. And we'll give it the default name of file connection one. And we'll create a new Salesforce connection. Now the Salesforce connection will use the credentials that are provided by your administrator. Um, we do require a Salesforce enterprise type account in order to use the Salesforce operators. Uh, if you do not have an enterprise type account, you can register for a free development account to test this functionality at salesforce.com. Also take note of the token that would be sent to you from Salesforce. You need that in here as well to configure the artifact. Okay, we have a successful connection to Salesforce and we have our two artifacts created. So next we can create schemas. So schemas describe the external structure of data, which could be databases, files, in this case, as well as Salesforce. So you can inv individually create them under the schema folder, or we can jump right into creating a data flow. And if you choose the appropriate operator, it will cr guide you to create the appropriate schema. So for example, if I grab read Salesforce, and I want to read Salesforce account information. I can select my Salesforce connection. And then from here, I can select new Salesforce schema. Um, that way, this will connect me to the Salesforce connection and then browse the objects that I can choose. So I want the account one, but I also want to be able to use information from the uh, contact and case. So I'm going to select case as well as contact. Okay, it'll create three schemas with the appropriate names. Click Finish. It will populate the schema pull-down menu as well as the Explorer tree. Okay, so that is for reading information from Salesforce account. So we're going to take two more. And in this current release, in order to merge data from Salesforce objects, you must use three separate um, Salesforce operators. In version 3.7, which will be released shortly uh, in the May timeframe, we will have what's called a, a SOCL operator or a Salesforce object query operator. And what that will allow you to do is initiate SOCL queries in one operator to join uh, have parent-child queries, child-parent queries, aggregated queries, etc., within one operator. Okay, we'll put here contact, select our connection, select our schema, and do the same for case. All right, so all three operators are now configured. And what we're going to do now is we're going to open up uh, each of these, and we're going to describe what you see on the left-hand side is the external structure within the schema. This is the layout of the records that are within Salesforce. And on the right side is the internal representation to Expressor. Uh, we call that a semantic type, uh, which is comprised of this collection of attributes we call a composite type. So I'm going to be able to join information from account, information from case, and information from contact. Now you'll notice Salesforce names all of its IDs, ID, 
uh, and there's other fields such as is deleted master record. Some of those we don't need. So I'm going to clean up these schemas to include only the relevant information that I need and also make them a little bit more unique um, to Expressor. So for example, under account, this ID, I'm going to join that to the contact object, but I want to name this something a little bit different so I can recognize it easily. So we'll call this one ID from account. And the only other information in here that I want is the account name. So I'm going to call this account underscore name. As far as the other records are concerned, is deleted, I don't need. Master record, I don't need. And then pretty much anything from here down, we can get rid of. So when we extract information from Salesforce, we're just going to get the account name. Now very easily, I could use this as a lookup as well, but again, just trying to show the demonstration of extraction and using the join operators as well. So let's go to contact. Okay, so in here, once again, ID, call that ID from contact. Okay, is deleted, we don't need. Uh, master record ID, we don't need. And here's the account ID that we're going to join to the account. So we'll call this account ID from contact. And you'll notice that there are data type settings and constraints and corrective actions. Uh, other video tutorials go into how those are used. I'm not going to be covering that in this tutorial. So we could have last name, first name, salutation, and then anything that's in here, probably up to department, we really don't need. Okay, so that gives me the contact information. And finally, we'll go into the case schema. Uh, we have our case ID. Uh, the contact ID. Okay, we don't need that. Uh, is deleted, we don't need that. Let's see, asset, pretty much anything here we don't need. And let's clean up up to here. So we are going to keep created date as well as um, closed date because we're going to take these two attributes and we're going to create a new calculated field called uh, days open. Okay, so now we adjusted what we want and what we don't. Next, we can go into our operators, go to our transformers, and grab our join operator. So the first thing we're going to do is join Salesforce account to Salesforce contact, and then specify the join. So here we'll say join account and contact. Select our input for keys. So we want the ID from account as well as the account ID from contact. So now you see why I renamed them so I know exactly where they're coming from. And the method will be in memory and the join type will be enter. Now we're going to grab another join operator and we're going to take whatever comes out of this join and join it with case. Call that join to case at our inputs. So now we want to join the contact ID from the case with the contact ID that came out of the contact. So here you're going to see ID from contact and then in here contact and method in memory and join type enter. Okay so now we have those objects joined we're going to perform some light transformation on this. And this is just to show you how you can use the transform operator. Uh, there is a uh, tutorial that goes into a little bit more detail on the transform operator. But in this case, we're just going to create a calculated field uh, called number of days. And we'll open up the transform operator, brings you into the rules editor. We have our inputs and the outputs. All of this information is auto propagating across. If there's something you don't want to auto propagate, you can just select it and then choose block inputs and that will remove it from the list uh, or just select unblock inputs and that will put it back in the list. Okay, so we're going to create a new expression rule and that expression rule is going to utilize created date, which is the date the case was opened, as well as closed date, which would be the date the case was closed if it was. And then we're going to add a new attribute and we're going to call this one days open. 
and we're going to make that a uh, decimal. The reason we're making it a decimal is because there will be some uh, fractional digits left over from the calculation that I'm going to use because uh, Salesforce has uh, seconds captured. So when we do the calculation, there's always some remainders that are left over. Um, so in this case, it'll use that information and put it as decimals. We could always change the uh, rounding of that if we want. Okay, so now at the bottom of the list, select days open, put that into our output. And these are called parameter rules. So these can be named anything we want. So create a date, we can just call it open. And close date, we can call that closed. So these parameter rules are used only within the transformation rule that you specify here, or the function, um, which makes these operator templates reusable for pretty much anything. So after we configure this, we could always change the mapping to these rules, but you never have to touch anything within the rule once it's defined. Let's go into our date time and let's select our elapse. So here returns the difference. If you want a little help on understanding those functions, just go to the expressor help. Uh, inside expressor help, do a uh, search and a search for whatever it is you're looking for. In this case, here's our date time functions, here's elapse, and explains how to use the uh, elapse function. Basically, you specify an input for one, an input for two, like open, closed, and then the format that you want the calculation. So here you can see operates on date time fields and returns the difference in seconds, minutes, hours, days, etc. So the token we're going to want is D. Uh, there is a tutorial on uh, date math that kind of goes in into this into more detail. So the inputs always are prefixed with the word input, and then you can type in dot, and then from the auto uh, completion IntelliSense menu, you can just select the appropriate parameter. So input.open, input.closed, and then comma, and then D for the number of days that we want to return. Um, now, there's one thing that I'm going to point out here is that I'm aware of how the date time elapse function works. And if the close date is empty, uh, we call that nil, what's going to happen is, is that the operation will fail because it doesn't have anything to calculate on, so it'll be a bad argument. So I want to take care of that operation by actually utilizing uh, another function called a decode. Okay, And by using um, the decode, which is available under BASIC, uh, decode will allow you to kind of do substitution for other variables um, based on what those values are. So for example, we always know there's going to be an open date, but the closed date uh, might be blank. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to type in decode. And what is it that we want to decode? Well, we want to decode the closed date. Okay, and what is it that we want to check for? Well, we want to check for a nil value. Well, if the value is nil, what value do you want it to be? Um, so I want it to be a, a timestamp. So in other words, to date the actual date of today, so we can at least get a valid calculation. So date time that timestamp. And then what do you want it to be if the close date is not nil? Well, I want it to be the actual value of the close date, which is just input dot closed. Okay. So using functions within functions is completely possible. Um, so again, the date time elapse function is just going to compute the difference between the two dates that are coming in. And then I use the actual decode to return either the current date and time if the close date is blank, if not return the actual close date that's in the field. And that will compute a days open. Okay, so now that we have our transformation rule set, um, what we're going to do is we're going to write this out to a ClickView file. So ClickView, if you're not familiar, it's a, a business discovery tool. Uh, you can learn more at clickview.com. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is just write out a data file that is going to be read by the ClickView application uh, based off of the join of Salesforce as well as the transformation of that new created field I just created. And we're going to put that in the file location that we designated. And we're going to create a new schema uh, so here, the option new click view schema from upstream output, what that does, it's going to take all the downstream, uh, or in this case, I'm sorry, upstream attributes that come in, and it's going to enable the actual writing of the field metadata within the click view file to be read by the click view application. And we'll just call that click view schema. And the file name, we'll call it uh, sf underscore case with the extension of .qvx. 
and the table name cases. And that's basically going to write out that particular file. So let's run. Okay, this will go out to Salesforce, join, merge, transform, and execute that file. If we go over to the location of where we designated that file to under Salesforce, and you can see date time as a 10.51 a.m. SF case that QVX was created. So in this case here, what we can do now is just go into our uh, ClickView application. In this case, I'm using the personal edition just to demonstrate uh, the power of the QVX file. Okay, now we'll create a new ClickView dashboard by using the QVX file generated by Expressor. You'll notice that I'm in the directory where we wrote that file. And inside the wizard, I'm just going to search for asterisk.qvx. And there's the file. There's a representation of the data inside the QVX file. And we will create a dashboard, save the dashboard file. And then we can go through the wizard. For the first example, I'll just choose a simple bar chart for the visualization. We'll use case origin as the first dimension and priority as the second dimension. And we'll do a count of case numbers. Okay, it'll automatically create list boxes with the associated values, as well as a representation of the data in the form of a bar chart. I'm gonna to go to the properties and we'll change the style to be stacked. Now this is not a tutorial to use ClickView. You can go to the ClickView website to find out more about that. I just wanted to give you an example of how this information can be visualized using the QVX file and the ClickView product. I'm going to create one more sheet object. In this case, we'll create a table box and we'll select count name as well as case number, close date, created date, and days open. Days open is our calculated field that we created within the Expressor transform. Okay, and there is our table box. Okay, one other thing, if you're not familiar with ClickView, they have what's called the associative experience. Uh, all of the data elements internally are related to each other. So for example, if I just wanna see all cases that have the origin of a phone call, I select phone and you can see the visualizations will update appropriately. I'll get into more detail on this in a later tutorial, uh, but that's it for now, guys. If uh, you need any other assistance, uh, please also view the other tutorials uh, in the community forums, or you can contact me at techevangelist at expressor-software.com. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.